Hello fellow Linux gamers, my name is GhostSquad57 and today I am playing Delver by Priority Interrupt. Uh, they're the developers and um, you know I saw this game in this Steam Rook like sale and it was you know only $2.50 um, and I thought okay you know what I'll download it and give it a shot. It is an early access game um, but even but you know even though it's early access uh, it still shows a lot of promise. I think it could uh, evolve into a really good dungeon crawler and that's what this game is it's more of a first person dungeon crawler with roguelike elements um, <clears throat> it's not exactly as in-depth as certain roguelikes uh, you know like I don't know Dungeons of Dreadmar and uh, Angband and all the other older roguelikes where you just have so many options and absurd amounts of things you can do although like I said this game is in uh, early access so maybe I don't know they could be adding that stuff in right now as I speak but uh, anyway yeah here's the main menu you just simply left click and you go right into the uh, the game here and uh, first thing you're gonna notice is it kind of looks like a uh, almost looks like this is meant for a mobile device just because of how uh, the buttons are all big and kind of spaced apart so you don't accidentally tap one or the other, um, but that's fine. It, it's it's a simple interface. It works. If you go to options here, you know you get your really basic options. Um, you know you have your sound and music. Really, nothing special there. Uh, UI design. It is nice that they allow you to adjust the uh, size of the UI because by default it's like right here. And um, I feel like for a desktop user or a PC user, that's just that's a bit too big. So you know I scale it down to about near half the bar and at a seems to look pretty good for me um, you also have detail and particles you know you should be able to run this game on max um, it's not very resource intensive at all all the textures are kinda 2d so it's not too bad and you can also adjust the FOV which is really really nice um, really nice that they included that um, and what's great is as you change the FOV you actually get a bit of a preview um, I personally find that 91 looks good on my screen because if I put 110, everything around here kind of looks stretched and distorted, um, which is common with FOV. You know, you want to pick the right value for your uh, screen resolution and stuff. And if you go to input, you have mouse sensitivity. I actually turn the sensitivity uh, completely up, and I still find it to be a little slow, a little sluggish, but it's not. It's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, basic key bindings here, drop inventory map, really simple uh, options and you can actually play the game see here turn right turn up down left you can actually play the game almost entirely with the uh, keyboard you know you can aim with the uh, arrow keys instead of the mouse but you know that's not really good for ranged or mages where you need that precision but you know it's good for warriors um, there is no jumping as in the uh, at least in this version and the game does kind of look like it's designed around that fact that it doesn't have jumping Anyway, yeah, let's just go ahead and click Dungeon 1, which is my save, and click play. And, uh, yeah, let's just hop right in. I'm actually going to get a different dungeon. Click empty here. So that way you can get a, a new dungeon. Um, so, yeah, when you start a new game, you're just kind of dumped here in the camp. Um, you're just given a dagger, a red potion, which I just, I just uh, quaffed on accident. Um, but, yeah, most consumables... Uh, give you sort of slow regen um, such as food and all that they give you slow life regen instead of just giving you a uh, base amount of health back although sometimes they seem to some certain consumables uh, just give you straight up life and so you, instead of regeneration there's a tattered note here now uh, this just kind of gives you uh, a bit of lore sometimes it's hints uh, and sometimes it's basic instructions on how to play the game See, so yeah, we can actually break these crates. There's never anything there, but I always like to check, right? Um, so yeah, if you look at the graphics, I I wouldn't really say they're Minecraft-like. Although, like when I saw a gameplay of this game, I kind of thought it looked like that. But you know, actually playing it, it's very uh, Doom-like, I would say, and you know, build engine-like, you know, Doom, uh, Duke Nukem, and Blood, and all those kinds of games. Where if you look. Uh, the textures are 2D and they actually move with you, which is neat. I actually like that. Um, 
I don't want any scrolls. This is the magician's friend. He sells you all the different types of spells. This guy doesn't really seem to say anything yet. Um, you know, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff, Joff, my bad, uh, sells you basic items um, like shields, arrows, bows, skill in a jar, all kinds of crazy stuff. This old guy just tells you, this usually tells you some random stuff. Uh, get the, get, go ahead and get the tankard here. I haven't really found out a use for the tankard yet. Um, let me get this candle. Candle's neat because it actually illuminates areas around you, which can be good in certain parts of the dungeon where you need uh, a little bit more visibility. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I can also permanently have it equipped like that. So yeah, we're going to go down here and, and uh, enter Dungeon 1. So yeah, this game uh, does have uh, randomly generated uh, dungeons, and uh, the random generation seems to work pretty well. I mean, you don't get a whole lot of uh, duplicates, so that's that's very important for these types of games, you know, that rely on heavy amounts of replayability. It's very important that the uh, random dungeon generation works and works well. Oh, bat. The bats are very annoying to hit, but uh, they usually have a very high rate of dropping some good stuff. Um, just have books and stuff here. See, so yeah, when you slash things, I like how it slash walls and stuff. It actually leaves a bit of a mark. That's a cool feature. Oh, got an enemy over there. And yeah, the uh, combat in this game is very simple. You just you have uh, three different attack buttons, although they all do the same thing, like space, left click, right click. They all do the uh, same attack. And uh, if you tap them, it does a very quick kind of jab. And if you hold and release, it does a very strong slash. And of course, depending on what weapon you have, um, your speed will vary. Like if you have a mace, the attacks are slower but stronger. And uh, yeah, I just got my first level up. The stats um, you choose when you level up are completely random. What I mean by that is like sometimes, you know, it'll say... You know, do you want to upgrade uh, agility, health, attack instead of, you know, magic, health, agility? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say... I'm going to go ahead and say health. Health is always nice to have. And I believe, and as you see here, I haven't actually, on this save, I haven't drunk a green potion yet. So it's, so the effect of it is unknown, um, which is very rogue-like. You know, you, you pick up a potion and you just quaff it. And the next thing you know, you're dying of poison. <laughs> um very unforgiving games. You're also given the um, spell wands at start. Go ahead and showcase that a little bit. It's a very it's a ranged weapon. Ooh, a lantern. That's much, That illuminates much more than a candle. There we go. Ready to go. Yeah, the enemies like to hide when you do a lot of damage to them. They seem to just run away and try to avoid you, which can be annoying sometimes, but that's fine. Warren Buckler. Mm, I think I'm just going to leave that there because it does uh, affect my speed, and I don't want to be slowed down. Oh, Magic Caster. So, yeah, you know, this is, uh, like I said, it's definitely more of a... Uh, first-person dungeons crawl than a roguelike because um, you know it's not at, at least right now it doesn't really feel as in-depth uh, as many traditional roguelikes it's very uh, actiony and more focused on attacking your opponents and just going in headstrong wow that is a very good wand oh, keep that for later um, which you know is fine I actually kinda like that about this game because you can just jump right in and immediately start uh, bashing enemies and not having to worry about, you know, uh, getting good uh, stat rolls and stuff like that. And, you know, you just jump right in and start slashing dudes up. Oh, let's see if I can... Oh, there you are. Drop anything? Ooh. Got the one right there. always run into the waterfalls. I always think there's going to be like a secret behind one of the waterfalls. It's just like a weird thing I always check for. Also a lot of flies 
the dungeon. Someone really needs to get some pest control done in here. Ooh, look at that secret wall. Oh, there is a... I'm hearing a lot of enemies in here. That's really cool, though. If you, you and... Uh, if you, your projectiles can actually clash with a uh, wizard's projectiles, which is pretty cool. I actually like that. You get caught in a little wizard duel. It's very fun. Uh, I'm getting a lot of uh, mage-oriented drops. Like I got a fire wand, a storm wand. Yeah, I don't think um, I don't think like uh, like in most you know traditional roguelikes, you can't sell stuff you pick up in the dungeon. Usually, you can't. So um, I think it's a good idea, personally, to just drop items. Like if you pick up a better sword, I think it's a good idea to just drop the current sword you have, you know, because you do have limited inventory space, so it's a good idea to manage. Oh wow, this bow is two-handed. Is this a long bow? Short bow, okay. I didn't know bows were two-handed. Mm. I guess that makes sense. bring up the map here you can uh, press the M key you also have the uh, little mini map in the top left and uh, I actually really like the game's interface it's very simplistic it doesn't get in the way you know it does exactly what an interface should it tells you your life you have a hot bar at the top and uh, and you got a little mini map and that's it right and I feel like that's all you really need um, for this type of game Let's go to the store here. Whoa. Little type of blob creature. Let's see if I can't get you. There we go. Yeah, I'm not sh too sure what the books are for. Um, I think they increase your magic power, but I'm not entirely sure. I haven't really done much uh, research on this game. I just kind of jumped in and started playing, which is... Uh, Usually not a good idea for any type of role-playing game. Especially roguelikes. Ooh, excellent iron sword. It's a very good weapon. At least for now. Oh, man. It's always, I always hate seeing this because I just wish, you know, I just wish I could jump. <laughs> iron dagger, I don't really need that. Whoa, a little wizard. Secret door. Oh. Oh. Ooh, excellent leather armor. That's useful to have. Oh, don't drop it. Ooh, scroll. Teleport. Not sure how that works. I think it's just a random teleport. That could be that could be useful if I'm if I'm in a uh, poor situation. Let's see here. Hmm. Resist magic. That could be very useful. Uh, AC speed one. I think I'm gonna go ahead and equip that. So most of the areas I. Uh, this uh, dun this part of the dungeon seems decently well illuminated, so I don't think I need the extra draw distance that the lantern grants. This game actually kind of reminds me a lot of Hexen, just because of the way the uh, gameplay is. I don't know why, but it just feels a lot like it to me. You know, and you also got these traps, which is a thing Hexen had a lot of as well. Red Potion. Um, I, I believe Red Potion is health. Mm, still could be. But I don't really need any right now. Oh. 
accidentally closed it. Ooh, this is a very small closed area. Oh yeah, this mace is awesome. Just whacked him once and he fell down. So yeah, uh, combat's very simplistic, but uh, it works. It 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 feels it has a decent feel to it, and uh, it keeps you engaged. Let's see here, might just go back and explore those other two pieces of the map that I didn't look at. Oh wow, missile wand, magic missiles, meat. Wow, I'm just getting some really good drops. Greater health. Wow. My inventory is just filled with great stuff. Yeah, one cool thing is sometimes you'll run into doors that are stuck and you can't open them and you have to actually bash them open, which is very cool. It's always fun to do. Um, I think, yeah, I explored all of this area. So we can just go ahead and descend to the lower level. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's uh, Delver. Um, it's a pretty fun game, you know. Um, it's still in early access, and you can kind of see that because it is still, like, in its current state, very simplistic, and there's not much, uh, and there's not really much things to do in it yet. It's, you know, you pretty much just go in a dungeon, uh, attack enemies, go for the last uh, boss, and then just run out, right? Um, but, you know, I, I think it has a lot of potential, and I think it could be uh, a very fun uh, first-person dungeon crawler root with roguelike elements. Um, like I said, I got it in the Steam roguelike sale for $2.50. Very well worth the money. Um, and the game also comes with a level editor as well, apparently. I haven't really looked into that too much, but that's a very uh, neat thing to include with your game. I think, you know, that that's a really smart thing to do because it could lead to, you know, a community that could you know, provide endless amounts of content. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed, remember to like, uh, comment what you thought of the video. Uh, if you have any f feedback, you know, make sure to comment and let me know uh, or message me. It doesn't really matter either way. It's fine. Um, and if you want to see more uh, content like this, uh, remember to subscribe. And if you're feeling extra generous, you know, you could, uh, you know, click on the little... Uh, little uh, eye up here it should be right, right here on the screen and you can choose to donate a uh, any amount of money you wish um, you know every dollar helps you know and with that dollar I could buy more games and do more commentary and uh, yeah anyway uh, th thank you for watching uh, Ghost Squad 57 signing out